Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies Live. Tonight we're looking at Springbank. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a little FYI. We've had a number of crazy storms here in California. And actually a couple weeks ago, after I went live, uh, we had a power outage and the internet was out. So I was really, really happy that I uh, got to do the live stream before things went a little wanky. Trees falling down all over the place, taking out power lines, a house down the road got hit. So hopefully, uh, it doesn't seem too bad tonight, but just in case, I did get a little alert from the local uh, power company. So hopefully everything will go uh, well tonight. Uh, Uncle Nate drinks whiskey. Thanks for uh, tuning in. He is having a little bit of Balvenie 21-year-old. And uh, Dub Master, thanks for tuning in. Hmm. Maybe break out the Springbank 11 Madeira cast. Ooh, sounds good. And Chris Ope. Chris Ope. Doug Chris Ope. If I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Sang some Powers 12. Pot still. A little Irish tonight. All righty. So I'm going to pour. This is the Long Grow uh, Peated Campbellton. Single malt. I'm going to pour a little bit of that. This is something I've been doing lately. One of those uh, often asked questions has to do with <coughs> how long... Does the whiskey last in a bottle? Not meaning how fast does it get consumed, but does it go bad? If you don't keep popping the cork all the time, it'll, it'll last a long, really, really long time. Number two, issue of cork breakage. I've had a few. It's really, really irritating. What I'm doing now is I don't, I'm not going to go around continually wet the corks and open them up. I don't want to do that. Uh, spirit exposure to the cork can deteriorate the cork, so I don't want to do that. However, <clears throat> I do want to moisten the cork a little bit before I open it. So I'm going to start doing that just before I open the bottle. Just before I open the bottle. So pour a little bit of the long grow. And I'm going to give some notes on the long grow in a minute. Pour a little bit of one of my all time faves, uh, Ardbeg 10 year old. I've never had a cork go on me on Ardbeg, knock on wood. Um, whiskey bottles don't need cork. Uh, I'm not going to go on an anti-cork rant tonight. I've already done that before. It's completely unnecessary. Uh, for some red wines, cork can help the uh, wine age in a bottle, exposing, you know, giving the wine a little bit of micro oxygen. Uh, but for whiskeys, it is completely uh, unnecessary. So I'm going to do tonight, um, Zedman. Hi from Melbourne, Australia. Looking forward to the Spring uh, Springbank Show. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, that's older bottle of Ardbeg Ten. Actually, it's a newer one, and I really like it. This is my sixth bottle, and actually, it's one of the best ones I've had. I know there can always be uh, variances in uh, bottles, but uh, this one's been really, really nice. Um, let me pull up my notes real quick. What I want to do tonight? First of all, we talk about. I don't want to assume everybody knows everything. You can have newbies. You can have people who know more. So just bear with me if you already know all this stuff. So here is an overview of Scotland. If you see down there, Campbellton is on a uh, peninsula, the end of the Kintyre Peninsula, west of the Isle of Arran, west of Glasgow. So I will be uh, going to Campbellton this July. Um, and basically, I'd go to go into Glasgow from well, San Francisco to London, London to Glasgow, Glasgow, take drive to uh, Androssen, um, ferry, take a ferry around to uh, Camelton. So there's a uh, Camelton. By the way, if you are planning a trip to Isla this summer and planning on staying in Isla, I highly recommend making your hotel reservations now. Um, distilleries, a lot of distilleries are not taking reservations now. And a lot of hotels are already booked. Yeah, so it's kind of where you can make reservations for your hotels, and a lot of them are already booked, but distilleries, you can't do them just yet. Uh, hopefully, within the next few weeks, I'll be able to start uh, booking distillery tours and visits. I'll be spending a week at Campbelltown, uh, at um, Springbank, going through the school, and then we'll head over to uh, Isla to do my second trip uh, through I Isla. Wow. So, 
Wow. You know, it's funny. If you drink the, if you smell and taste them by their own, they're much more distinctive. When you smell them side by side, maybe it's because your nose gets a gets full of the peat character, and you're still smelling what was in in the other glass, but they're com- becoming more alike. And also, I have now I have to remember which one was which. Shoot. Shoot. I was so busy talking. I think this one's a long grow. Uh, yeah. This one's a long, left is a long grow, right is Ardbeg. So uh, just so I don't forget, so I don't have a brain fart. Uh, crowded barrel glass should be Ardbeg. Whiskey Fest glass should be Campbelltown. Yep. Uh, there's a slightly more ashy character on the long grow. I would say there's more of a chocolatey note on the on the art bag on the art bag. <laughs> you get so busy and color wise, you probably not gonna see that real well. Color wise, very 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 simple because neither one of them are using any uh, E150A, so they'll actually look very 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 similar. All right, so this is sort of an end doing spring bank an end. To a series of doing 24 uh, Scotch distillery profiles. And let me explain this in case you haven't been following along from the very beginning. So, one of the primary textbooks for studying for uh, the level three, the Master of Scotch, is a book by uh, uh, Charles McLean, Spirit of Place. What you're seeing off to the right is the table of contents. Along with reading this book, from the website, there are 24 distilleries that are going to be focused on during the exam. And it says, while questions about any and all Scotch producers and facts can be asked in the exam, a core group of classical producers has been set by the council for extensive competence testing. So in this series, I have been focused on these 20 for distilleries, but not in this numerical order. This tonight, or today in the, for Springbank, this is the last of those 24. However, as you saw there in the notes, it says any and all distilleries are up for exam, but the, a core group is gonna be 24. So to go back to this, if you look at, if you have now a copy of it, Charlie McLean's book, Beyond the 24 that are the core group, uh, there are, I think it's 53, 53 total. In fact, here is a list of all the distiller, of, of all the uh, ones in the book. Yeah, so there's 55. So there's 55. Hi there. Uh, there's Here's 55. Here's all the 55. So the ones that are in red are and red and i put an x in front of it meaning i already did it those are the ones that i've been covering uh in this series thus far they are the 24 core producers for the rest of this study i'm going to continue and do the other distilleries so i will cover all 55 of these distilleries so i've already covered the ones in red with an x on it and now I'm going to go on and do the other ones. And I'll be covering them pretty much uh, the same as I'm doing uh, the current one in terms of providing notes on history and all of that. Um, and eventually all those notes eventually will all go together in one document, which I will then upload to the Facebook group. It'll be in the file section. And so anybody studying or if you just want a copy of it, you'll be able to download it. it it'll give you history and so forth of all these uh, distilleries. The problem is um, getting getting bottles of all these distilleries is rather challenging. I was going shopping again, buying more bottles. Um, Yeah, (laughs) Uh, I'm correct. Um, I'm just reading everybody's comments here. Ryan Mercer, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Um, 
says, wow, that's intense. Yeah, it's a lot of studying. It's a lot of studying. I'm an intense guy. I actually wish I could have just jumped to the third level and skipped the first two, uh, <laughs> but that's not how, how they work. So um, what was that? What was that? Oh, so now I've been buying bottles for all those other distilleries that I want to cover during this series. Uh, I'm worked, also working on the calendars, you know, in my, my itinerary. More or less, I should probably be done with that by the end of October. I'm not taking the exam until 2024. So between now and October, I should cover all the distilleries. I will then be doing series on production. Um, I'll be doing series on blended scotches because that's in the book and other related uh, videos and, and, and part of this course of the study. So I'm going to Scotland this year and I'll be returning to Scotland in 2024 as well. I think going through the Springbank School will be of great benefit so that I'll understand production, not just from a theoretical standpoint, from a book, but a hands-on and be able to ask a lot of questions and, and so forth uh, while we're there. Uh, there's another uh, gentleman who we there with me and I've been, we were just interacting today, um, named, named uh, Taylor, Taylor, who I've had on here as a guest. So he'll be going, uh, going along uh, with me. Looking forward to it. So um, we're spending one night in Glasgow and then head straight to Campbelltown. We get there on a Saturday, July 1st, and then Sunday, um, travel to Campbelltown, and then we'll be there for like a week. And then from there, head over to um, Isla for like four or five, like four days, and then head to the main side. We'll start hitting some uh, main side distilleries. All righty. So what a, let's get into these two whiskeys. Long row versus art bag. So I'm going to be smelling these and tasting these, and then I'll give you my personal perspective on these two. So I'm doing the long row. It's a non H statement bourbon and cherry cast. Bought it 46% alcohol by volume. Of course, prices are relative as according to where you live. These are California prices, uh, 75 to 99 dollars versus art bag. It's a 10-year-old Asian first and second fill bourbon cash. It's also 46% alcohol by volume, a little more affordable at $49 to $55 here in California. I know if you're in Canada or somewhere, you're probably going to pay a lot more. Another advantage Art Bay has, not only being a little more affordable, it's more available. It's easier to find. Now, I can get a long grow at a local shop here, uh, but Art Bay is a lot easier to get a hold of. So Ardbeg in this head-to-head -head competition between these two has some advantages in terms of price and availability. Uh, and it has an age statement. If you're an age statement uh, fundamentalist and you think, you know, that should be mandatory on everything. Uh, but Long Grow potentially has an advantage and then it has some sherry cask in it. So maybe get a little bit more complexity out of a sherry cask. And of course, out of all this, it's a matter of personal preferences. Now, before I, I, I want to, we're going to get to our quiz, and then I'm going to be smelling and tasting these as we go along. Um, maybe give some comments along the way. Uh, before we get into our quiz, I want to talk a little bit, just a little bit about uh, shell and tube versus worm tub condensers. Now, as I said before, I'm going to be doing a whole series, and I'm going to go really in depth. There are some videos out there on production, on Scotch whiskey production, and they're good. But I'm going to try to go more in depth. Uh, what will help me prepare for an exam? So I've done a series on the history of um, Scotch whiskey. I've done a series on uh, Scotch whiskey business. I did those for the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. I'm studying for Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. And so I'll be doing a series on production. I've been wanting to do it. I've been talking about it for a long time about doing a series on production for a long period of time. Well, these are very, very, very distinctive. Um, the long grow is ashier. The art bag is it's I'd say more of a chocolate character, but it's also more oceanic. Um, it's brinier. 
It's also nuttier. If, I, if you don't put your nose too deep into it, you can get a hint of the sherry cask. And I know you take, don't take too big of a whiff. You do get a little more hints of it. Much more than I was before. So doing side by side, you may think this whiskey is going to be better than this one. And then when you do, because you're going by your memory of those whiskeys, but then when you actually put them side by side, you'd be surprised. You go, you know what? I thought this one was going to win, but this one won. Uh, when I went to Ardbeg 10, I did a whole video on this, versus uh, Port Charlotte 10. Check it out uh, as to which one won. I won't tell you this. Check out my video on Port Charlotte 10 versus Ardbeg 10. I went into it with different thoughts than when I came out with it. There is a character to Ardbeg. It's a like clay. The only way, it, what comes to my mind is, I haven't spent a whole lot of time doing clay necessarily, but in high school, you, I took a had an arts and crafts shop, you know, high school, an easy grade, and you're doing clay, and you have the wheels, excuse me, spinning around, and you take some wet clay, and you got it on the thing, and you got the thing spinning around, you know, and you're spinning with your foot. It wasn't an electric one, and you're using your hands, you're using some water, and you're trying to shape pottery with it. There was a smell that I distinctly smell, I remember sort of coming off that, or any other time you've been around some muddy or whatever, there's a little bit more of that character uh, in Ardbeg. All right. Uh, Mark Lampert says, looking forward to the production series. Can you provide the links to the videos uh, you mentioned? I can provide them later on, or you can just search Eric Waite, Eric Waite, and just put, Ardbeg 10 versus Port Charlotte. Or if you just put Eric Waite Ardbeg 10, it'll show up. It'll show up. Anytime, uh, any any whiskey you're wondering, has Eric reviewed that or covered that? Just put my name, E-R-I-K-W-A-I-T, and put that after it, and, and you'll, it'll, it'll pop up. It'll pop up. All right. But I could put, uh, I could put a, a link to it uh, l- later on. All right. Let's get into... Oh, let's, so let's talk a little bit. I'm, again, this is, a, a, I'm going to try to explain this at a level that an elementary school kid can understand. Uh, just, you know, super, super basic. Now, a lot of whiskey tubers <coughs> make a big, ah, uh, spring bank uses warm, uh, warm tub, warm tub, warm, warm tub. And then other whiskey tubers repeat what they heard. Oh, it's warm tub, warm tub, warm, warm, warm tub. But do they know? But do they take the time, take 30 seconds to Google it and find out what the heck a worm tub is? First of all, just to let you know, it's actually not worm tub. If I want to get technical, it's worm tub. It's invented by a German gentleman uh, back in the 1700s. We'll get more into this one, do the full video. Uh, Worm is the German word for serpent. So it's not worm. Like you got worm in the in the dirt, it's worm. Um, Martin Luther, a seventeen fifteen, Octing, uh, October thirty first, posted his ninety five thesis uh, on the church door in Wittenberg. He then was called to recant at the Diet of Worms in Germany. So there's a place called Worms in Germany, not the Diet of Worms, the Diet of Worms, and so Worms or Worm is the uh, German word for serpent, and that's where, because the shape of uh, the uh, tube in the condenser. Now you have shell and tube, and you have warm tub. Warm tub is the older one, invented 1700s by a German dude. All right, uh, let me show you a picture. It sort of looks like a big hot tub, like you might have in your backyard. So there's a picture of it, and they're currently, at least uh, as far as I can tell. 17 scotch distilleries that use warm tub condensers. Uh, by the way, something to be aware of, when you're reading books or online sources, you might find, well, one book says this and another book says that. It's just the nature of the business. It's not that they were necessarily wrong, is they might have been right at the time in which they were written, but things have changed. Things are constantly changing. So there may be more distilleries now or less distilleries now that are using uh, warm tubs. Ardenhoe is the newest distillery 
and there these are alphabetical on the top so Ardenho is and now using warm tubs and as you can see it looks like a like a sort of like a hot tub and there are there's pi pipe uh tubing going around on, on the inside of it this particular picture is taken from Dal Winnie, which is smack dab in the middle of this list underneath Krigeliki. Uh, Dal Winnie is, an, is important in this story because Dal Winnie switched. They switched from a varm tub to shell and tube. They didn't like the result. And so they switched back to varm tub or worm tub. If you just want to say worm tub. That's one of the biggest, I would say, um, sources of information about the differences because someone actually changed. And so we have an actual empirical uh, example. Here's the thing to keep in mind. All right. I'm going to, I'll take the picture off real quick. Let's do it. And then I'll bring it back in just a second. All right. I'm trying to explain this for, for, you know, an elementary school kid. <sighs> Whiskey made from a beer, right? Take a grain, you convert the starch to sugar, and we add some water to the sugar to get a sugary uh, liquid, right? Called a wort. They get that, then we add yeast, it gets fermented, and then we have a malt beer. The malt beer. We want to remove water. I know if I'm talking to you like you're stupid, I'm, don't take it as an insult. I'm just trying to explain it as simply as possible. If you can't explain something simply, then you probably don't understand it. All right. So we're going to take this beer and we're going to remove water. We're going to remove water by heating it up. We heat it up and they, and they still, copper pot still, uh, in which we then turns to vapors, right? As a vapor, the vapor is now making contact with the copper in the still as it goes up. The copper, the advantage of copper is not only is it malleable so you can shape it, it's a great, great uh, con conductor of heat, uh, but it also removes sulfur. So when it's in vapor form and interacting with copper, it's removing some sulfur compounds. You have a real tall still. It has to be a lighter spirit to get up and over, right? So a lot of it's going to come back. A lot of it's going to come down as it, it tries to go, it starts to cool off, and then it comes back down. So the taller of the still, the lighter the spirit, which is Glen Morangy. I know. I know I'm talking very, very simple. You probably already know this, but here we go. All right. It's vapor in contact with copper, not liquid in contact with copper, vapor. The vapor, when it goes up and over and into the line arm, it then goes into a condenser. A condenser now takes that vapor and condenses it back into a liquid. I got a sneeze coming here, by the way. I'm going to take a sip real quick. I can feel a sneeze coming. All right. Now, if you look at, if you saw this saw that picture, you look at a worm tub, versus a shell and tube, you might be tempted to think that a worm tub um, has more contact and or has uh, more copper, that this, the, the, it'll have more contact with copper in a worm tub because of the size of it. Let me show you a shell and tube. This is a drawing of a shell and tube. So there is the, I'm scratching my nose here. So there is a shell and tube. There's a drawing of a shell and tube. Here, to go back to, is the worm tub. You go, look at the size of that thing. Look how small that is. And so you might be tempted to think, you might be tempted to think, well, the worm tub, because of the size of that thing, must uh, introduce more copper to uh, and, have a, and have a greater impact on the vapors and spirit. The, the, the challenge is, the thing is, it's not size, that necessarily matters in and of itself. It's how much time the vapor is interacting with the copper in the vapor form. So if you cool down the vapor very quickly, it's going to go back to a liquid form and have less interaction with the copper. Where are 
Okay. I know I'm explaining this is as simple as I can. So if you think this through, where is the shell and tube condenser? It's inside the distillery. Coming right off the line arm. Where is the worm tub? It's outside, right? If you look at pictures of Dalwini, just Google pictures of Gal Galwini. Dalwini. The worm tub condensers are outside. Now, I was at Del Winnie Distillery in June 2018. June. It was the last distillery I hit, I think, if I recall. Um, or was it Tuller Barton? Anyway, I was on the way back to Glasgow, come down from up north in, in Scotland. Uh, in the surrounding hills above Del Winnie, there was still a little bit of snow in, in this crevices in the hills. That's how cold it is. So if your condenser is outside, it's going to get, the, the vapor is going to cool, cool down faster. It gets cooled down faster. It gets condensed back into liquid faster and consequently has less interaction with the copper. Consequently, a worm tub has less interaction that the, the whiskey ends up having less of spirit ends up having less interaction with the copper because it's cooled down very quickly. That's not the only reason why. There's other reasons why, and, and, there's, and there's more variances to it, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm giving you the most simplest version. I can, we can talk about all the various different distilleries and all the variations and all the various distil distilleries. Right? There are some variations, what Mortlach does and so forth. But this is the most simplest explanation. So the biggest difference then is you have less contact with copper, hence not as much of that sulfury compound is removed. And so you get just a little bit. And people in small amounts, like just a whiff of that salt, it gives a little more, maybe a little bit more earthiness, maybe a little darker character, a little, you know, it gives it not as much of a sort of a cleanness to a spirit. And in small amounts, people like that. People like that character. So it's not necessary that a shell and tube is better than a worm tub or a worm tub is better than a shell and tube. It's what you like and what the ultimate goal is to what type of spirit you're trying to achieve. And you do that by making doing a number of different things, size and shape of the still, worm tub versus shell and tube, how you're doing your cuts, what type of cash are you using, are you using uh, you know, Dunnage warehouses versus rack warehouses and on and on and on, right? Right. So the significance of a Sheldon tube versus uh, a worm tub, it's only one element in the bigger picture. It's only one element. It's not the all and end all of how your spirit's going to come around. It's not necessarily that's going to be any better. And so just for uh, shits and giggles, let me give you one more time. Let me let's go through those uh, distilleries. Now, if you're familiar with the spirit on all these, um, you might think to yourself, hmm, yeah, you know what? I can kind of see maybe there's a little bit more of a character to this uh, that I find. I, Ardenhoe, I've never tried it. I will be visiting the distillery, so I can't say anything about that. Ballandalock, I've never tried theirs. You're never going to find theirs. By the way, they have a one-day experience working in the distillery. Uh, I'd like to do it one of those days. Balmanek, Ben Benrenis. I think I got a typo there. Uh, Glen Kinchy, Craggenmore, uh, Craigalicky, Dalwini, Edward Dower, Glen Elgin, Mortlock, Oban, Old Pulteney, uh, Royal Lochnagar, Spayburns, uh, Springbank, and Talisker. And it looks like I got a typo on that one. That is my bad. All right, that's my bad. Um, take away this picture here. All righty, so in the most simplest terms, what's the difference? Worm tub, it gets cooled down faster. Vapor has less interaction with the copper. Hence, you get a little bit more of a sulfury note. That's it. That's, that's, that's simple. That, that's probably the simplest explanation and the significance between a worm tub and uh, a shallow tube. All right. Take another sniff here. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
Nice. Um, there's plenty of material out there. I think Shayla uh, from Whiskey Central, I think she already did a video on, on this issue. I, I've watched it, but it's been a while, so I don't remember it that well. But I, I'm pretty sure she's a fellow whiskey geek. She did a really good job on it. Um, but, you know, this stuff can get really, really confusing. And there's so much stuff to remember and, you know, and to forget all this. So if you can learn to explain it to somebody else, that will help you know it. So actually me trying to explain this and from off the top of my head without just read some reading something, that helps me. So that way during examination, if I'm on the floor and I'm in front of the examiners, such as Charlie McLean, uh, and they ask me, then I can explain this. But if you can explain it to a child so a child can understand, then you really would. All right, let's get into our spring bank quiz. I think it should only have like six or seven questions. Oh, another thing. Um, there was a comment on my Spring Bank 15-year-old regarding Spring Bank uh, peat, their peat source. Does Spring Bank get their peat from Isla or do they get their peat from Campbelltown? Is it locally cut peat? So I got questioned on that. I said that they could source their um, peat from Isla. A question on that. I don't mind. If I, you know, I could, I'm not perfect. I could, oops, have a brain fart. But I'll tell you what, everything that I put in my videos, I, I'm looking up and I'm putting notes and I'm getting from sources. I'm not pulling information out of my ass and just putting it in there. However, as I said before, books can be contradictory because of when they're written and things have changed. They can just make mistakes, they can make errors. I posted a few pictures of errors from books. Uh, some of them are kind of funny. Uh, and online sources. So unfortunately, when you're reading something and check multiple sources and things can change. So it may be there was a time Spring Bank used from local cut peat. There may be another time. Oh, we're getting short, whatever. Or some EPA or not EPA because they don't have the EPA. Some sort of environmental group is objected to them using local peat. So then they go to Isla. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but I have different sources. Charlie says they use, whoa, I'm going to drop this. Charlie says they use local peat. Um, the sources cited in um, Wikipedia say, or uh, say um, Isla, and one of the books I have says Isla. So who knows? Anyway. All right, let's get into our quiz. Quiz question number one. <laughs> I'm starting these off easy, man. Spring Bank Distillery is located on A, the Isle of Isla. Um, B, the Isle of Skye, C, Campbelltown, or D, the Isle of Orkney. Uh, we started off with a map. So even if you've never, ever, 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 ever read anything or saw anything uh, about Spring Bank, um, just from this video alone, you learned that Doug Chrisop is absolutely correct and that it's uh, C. By the way, there's two people I owe a challenge coin. I have not forgotten. Um, I've got a note. It's just a matter of getting to the post office. It's just a matter of getting to the post office. That is right. It's Campbelltown. <coughs> so here's the other weird thing. Not only did we have a storms where trees were falling over hitting houses, taking out telephone poles. So there's a property just to that side of my house. Tree fell over. Thankfully, it fell east and just hit out of trees. We're talking a cypress tree that might have been like 100 feet tall. If it had fallen this way, it would have hit, hit my house. Another, a eucalyptus tree on that side of the road fell over and it fell north. If it had fallen west, like the cypress tree, it would have crushed a car and taken out um, uh, the power lines. So I'm very thankful, at least in, in my little neighborhood here, we, we avoided disasters. And then down the road um, is where there, there's actually a house, about a five minute walk down the road, a uh, house um, got hit. All right. A little bit of the yard big. Hmm. So the long grow, a little bit more on your apple and pear notes, a little more of an ashy peat. The Ardbeg, it's muddier, it's brinier, it's more oceanic. 
There is a nice chocolate note there. It's a little and a little bit nutty there as well. Let's move on to the next quiz question. Springbank was founded in 1828 by Archibald Cavill, B. Archibald Mitchell, C. Archie Archibald Reed, or D. Ralphie Mitchell. Who founded Springbank Distillery? Who founded Springbank Distillery? Was it Archibald Campbell? Archibald Mitchell, Archibald Reed, or Ralphie Mitchell? Duke says B. Duke says B. Zedman says B. Now, the temptation can always be, okay, I don't know this one. So what did the first guy say? Oh, he's probably right. He's pretty confident. I answered first. Therefore, he's probably right. So I'm just going to see what that guy says. I know that happens a lot. That I, I, I know that happens on, when other channels have, uh, have quizzes. And there aren't that many that do. A lot of people are just following the leader. They're just repeating whatever that person says. All right, and the answer is, oops, sorry. What the heck? Did I not? Where did it go? Question two. Damn it. Holy cow. The answer slide is gone. Did I delete it? Son of a gun. I'm sorry. Oops, I screwed up. All right. Man, Arthur. So I was having problems uploading this stuff. And now it's gone. Anyway, so the answer is B, Archibald Mitchell. Archibald Mitchell. Um, so the answer is B, Archibald Mitchell. Uh, when I was uploading these, the, it, I was having problems with it. Anyway, so just to let you know, just go back to these names real quick. Man, that is so weird. The hell? So Archibald Campbell is a person. Archibald Campbell um, founded Jura. Archibald Mitchell founded Springbank. There was the Reed family, uh, but they didn't found it. And of course, Ralphie Mitchell is Ralphie. Now, maybe I'm misspelling his name. The question I have is, is Ralphie related to the family that currently owns Springbank? Because it's still, oh, it's J.N.A. Mitchell. Uh, is Ralphie related to the J.N.A. Mitchell who currently owns the distillery? All right, next question. In 1969, J.N.A. Mitchell, the owners of Springbank, buys an independent bottler. Who did they buy? They bought an independent bottler. No, not Joni Mitchell. Um, <laughs> No, not Joni Mitchell. <laughs> All right, in 1969, Jane A. Mitchell, owners of Spring Break, bought an independent bottler. Who did they buy? Did they buy Adelphi, Barry Brothers in Red, C. Cadenhead, or G. Gordon McPhail? Uh, D says Gordon McPhail. Uh, sorry. Uh, do, uh, Doug says uh, C. And uh, the answer is they bought Cadenhead. So there's two Cadenhead stores, at least two. There's one there in Campbelltown. It's right down the road from uh, Springbank Distillery. And there's another one in, um, come on, brain, in Edinburgh, right down the road from Edinburgh Castle. So if you want to buy stuff from uh, Cadenhead, you can go to either the one. It's straight at the shop. Uh, you can go to the one there in Campbelltown or they go to the one in, in Edinburgh. I visited the one in Campbellton uh, when Roy and I, Aquavite, when we were in Edinburgh, we went by the one in Edinburgh, but they were closed by the time we got there. Um, so they weren't open. All right, take another sip. The long grow, I'm actually put this over here and this over here and make this. The long grow is a little more honeyed, a little more peach, a little more apple. The peach smoke is medium to medium plus and envelops it pretty nice. The Ardbeg I would say it's a richer, darker, more intense peat. 
It's much more of a smack upside the face of Pete. It's got that dark chocolate going on there. It's got a little more of a greener note. Um, lemon lime character. It's more of a lemon lime, whereas this is more of an apple and pear. This is more of a lemon and lime. It's got, it's got a much, I'd say the hard baked tan is also saltier, particularly on the finish, saltier. And it's got that ch chocolatey note there. All right. Next question. I'll tell you what my preference is uh, at the end. Which of these is not a Spring Bank brand? So, um, if you saw my review of the Campbellton Lock, I covered the Campbellton Lock is a blended malt from Spring Bank Distillery, uh, but it's a blend of all the brands there in Campbelltown. But which of these is not a Spring Bank brand? Is it A, Springbank? That would be stupid if Springbank was not a brand of Springbank. <laughs> Hazelburn. Hazelburns are hard to come by, by the way. And then so if you can find the expensive, Glen C, Glen Scotia, or D, Longro. D, and everybody's saying C. And again, I have to tell you, man, it's, it's not a difficult quiz. It doesn't have to be. So if someone's new to all this, just let you know. The answer is Glen Scotia. But these are just around the corner from each other. So um, Springbank and uh, Glen Guile, which makes Kilcarran, I mean, literally right next door to each other. And they currently share the same warehouse, although a warehouse was was being built when I was there. So maybe uh, Glen Guile has their own warehouse by now. I don't know. I'm Maybe I'll find out when I get there. And then 0.4 miles, uh, so less than half a mile from... Uh, Springbank is Glen Scotia. You can walk there. I guess about probably seven minutes. Probably walk there in seven minutes, or drive around the corner, whatever, whatever you want to do. So they're really, really close by. All right. Um, next question. Which of the following is correct? This this question is going to be a little more challenging, but if you think think it through, if you're familiar with the whiskeys, you're going to know which of the following is correct. Spring Bank receives six hours of peat smoke and 30 hours of hot air. Hazelburn receives 48 hours of peat smoke. Longro receives 30 hours of hot air. Which of these is accurate? Donner Pass, is it... Uh, Raining there, starting to snow up here. Another two feet coming. I know, I know, I know. In case you don't know, Donner Pass is uh, Sierra, up in the Sierra foothills. Um, yes, we're getting rain. It's been raining this whole time. In fact, I started off this live stream saying that we've got another storm going on here. Anyway, um, enough of the weather report from California. <laughs> and the answer is A. Spring Bank received six hours of peat smoke, 30 hours of hot air. And they think about it. if if Hazelburn, uh, uh, okay, if Long, okay, if Longro is peated and Hazelburn is not, then that answers that one. Just to make it simpler. All right, next question: Which of the following is correct? So we got a question regarding peat smoke. Then what about distillation? Which of the following is correct? Springbank is double distilled. I had to modify the logos, but if you're paying attention to the last slide, it was on there. Spring Bank is double distilled. Hazelburn is triple distilled. Longro is two and a half times distilled, which is correct. Which is correct. I'm taking out a sip here real quick. Challenge in where I'm at is it's not just a matter of rain, but this crazy ass wind that comes off the ocean. And there's nothing to keep it. There's no hills. There's no nothing. It's just a you just get a full blunt of uh, brunt of the wind. I'm in Buffalo. Already had two separate storms where four feet of foot smell fell in 48 hours. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's, anyway. Let's give you the answers and we can go on about that. And the answer is 
Hazel burn. Hazel burn is triple distilled. Is triple distilled. So uh, I actually posted this morning on the Whiskey Tribe, uh, Rex and Brianna, and then of course Daniel's on there. Um, they got hit with uh, with a deep freeze and ice. Check out the video; it's crazy. Uh, so they got trees falling all over the place, and uh, mm -hmm. no damage to any of the buildings, I don't think. But trees falling all over the place; it's a big mess, and the, the, you know, icicles, you know, all over the place. It's kind of cool looking. Um, but anyway, so check out the video; it's kind of crazy. All righty. Mm -hmm. I know some people aren't big fans of the Vulton Tribe. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm friends. Uh, it's not how I would do a channel. But they're doing their own thing. All right. Um, bring the comments back up. So, um, Long Grow. Or I'd beg 10. Hold on. So, Long Grow also does, as I mentioned in the video, from knocking stuff over. They also do the long grow reds. These are also challenging to come by. Uh, they've done like Pinot Noir, I think Cabernet or Cabernet Franc. Uh, I think they did a Mount Back, if I recall. Oh, they did um, Agaha, which is the producer, um, Barolo Cask. I bet you those are going for over $1,000 now. Um, this is a 13-year-old uh, Malbec, and I've, I've reviewed this a long time ago. That's a nice, I don't know how well you can see that. That definitely has a red red tint to it, red tint to it. So keep your eyeballs out, not just for the Long Grow Peated, but the Long Grow Red. You know, just a short time ago, you could find these long normal Long Grows all over the place, and they're affordable, and people weren't going like super bonkers. Uh, over all this, but we're living in a in a in a different time. So, which do mm -hmm. I prefer? Drink some water. Yeah, well, Texas has nuts weather, but the last couple of years, they've been having some crazy ass snow and crazy. And the thing is, the biggest problem is they're not built for it because it's unusual. They're not built for it. Consequently, pipes breaking and, and all the rest of it. If, you know, they get rain like this in Scotland all the freaking time. You know, they're used to it. They get it all the time. It doesn't affect them, right? Because they're used to it. Everything's settled. You know, they don't have trees falling all over the damn place and power lines breaking and whatever else. They're used to it. What they're not used to is a heat wave. And so when I was there in 2018, they had a heat wave of 92 degrees. Well, because they don't have like a lot of air conditioning, um, they they have ch difficulty with it. Me, I don't have any problem with it. 92 is a, a typical nice spring summer day in California. All right. I prefer the Ardbeg 10. Um, how many of you are surprised? I prefer the Ardbeg 10. I think it's richer. I think it's more complex. I think it has there's something more going on from the front and the middle into the finish. I think it's deeper. I like that salty component. I like that dark chocolate component. But if there's someone who doesn't like the maritime, it's not seaweedy. It's it's not iodine quite as much as say like Lafroig. Um but I like that richer character. I really, really like the Ardbeg. Uh, I've given this anywhere between, say, 92 to 95 points, depending on it, you know. Um, and and still, the, it's still holding its own on the price point. That's one of the key factors. Whereas uh, the Long Grow, it's nice. It's good. But, you know, Talisker, the Talisker 10, maybe. Uh, or um, Lechik, the Lechik 10. I think Lechik 10 would beat this. 
you know, and then just look at all the various Isla, other Isla um, peated whiskeys. And so it's nice, you know, you if you're going to study Springbank, you know, and I mean studying, uh, it's it's a it's a ball you should get to know. But if you're just interested in drinking, you're not a reviewer or, or a studier. I'm keep belching like crazy. Sorry, I'm trying to hold it back. Um, then it's not something I would go out of my way for or feel the need to spend an extra twenty thirty dollars for. The Ardbeg Ten, I would say hands down, it is a better a better whiskey, a better whiskey, a better peated whiskey. Um, but if you're a peat fan. And you want to broaden your horizons and understand what Scotch peat, uh, Scott whiskey peat is all about. Then I'm gonna say, yeah, you should try the various islands. You should try the Western Highlands, like Electric and Talisker. You should try um, Campbelltown peat. You should try Highland peat. You should try um, Lowland peat. You should try. Um, <sighs> Orkney peat and get to know all the peats. But if you're not that big of a buyer and consumer of whiskeys, look, look, I just, I don't need all these peated whiskeys. I just want something that's really, really good. You know, I'm, I'm going to have five to 10 bottles in my little whiskey collection. And I just want one or two peated whiskeys. And I could, I could get the long grow or I could get the art bag. What should I get? Hands down, absolutely. I get the art bag. I get the art bag. Um, I find a software note in Longro uh, non, that I can't ignore. My vote is for Ardbeg 10. See, that the, the software note, as we, we just got finished talking about, that's a matter of personal preference. If you don't like it or if you're sensitive to it, um, then, yeah, then, yeah, then, then I totally agree with you. I am not super sensitive to um, sulfur. I am super sensitive, really sensitive to um, trichlorinanosol or TCA, also known as cork taint. If, if someone opens a, a, a bottle, whether it's a wine or whiskey, it's got a bad cork, from the other side of the room, I will pick it up. And it's extremely offensive, extremely offensive. I really, 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 really do not like it. it in fact, it pisses me off when it happens in a whiskey because cork is totally unnecessary. So, all right. Um, trying the 22 Spring Bank 15, very sherry, but funk is still present. See, I see again, it's a matter, of, it is dark, it is dank. And in, in my video, I likened it to being like, uh, um, my, man, my brain just went break. Uh, a particular burgundy. Um, and now my brain just went blank on it. Um, there's one, one, well, Burgundy Pinot Noir generally tends to be earthier and notier, uh, but Nuit St. George, Nuit, uh, it came back, Nuit St. George out of all the Burgundies hat has much more of that dank, earthy character to it. It may be because of the native yeasts, Pretinomyces, it may be Brett character, but, um, Nuit Saint George, it's almost like um, a, a like a, a rubber on the end of a pencil. It's almost like that 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 kind of character to it, um, that funk of a, a rubber pen rubber pencil, and that kind of reminds me of a Springbank uh, funk. So anyway, uh, won't those conditions help their whiskey maturation? Uh, if you're talking about the weather in Texas, no. Um, if it gets below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, um, the spirit is now is no longer interacting with the cask. It's basically not really maturing. Aging, yes, because time moves on. The clock keeps ticking. Time doesn't stop. But it's not really maturing because it's not interacting with the cask. So when you're taking samples... Um, from a barrel to test the barrel, you don't do it in the middle of winter. You do it uh, spring, summertime. So that's when you take samples to test your, you don't do it in the middle of winter. But yeah, it's no. Um, if you want to extend the length of your aging, maybe, but other than that, no. No, 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 no. All right. Anyway. 
So, all righty. So we're heading to the top of the hour. Hmm. Hmm. So what am I going to be doing next? Aaron. Aaron. Uh, I don't know if you probably can't see him up there. So I have one, two, three, four, five bottles of Aaron up there. I'm gonna be. We're gonna be doing Aaron Distillery this next week. There'll be two. Uh, I'll be doing the Barrel Reserve and the Ten Year Old. The Barrel Reserve and the Ten Year Old. I also have the Sherry Cask, the Quarter Cask, and the Amarone Cask. Uh, I don't know. I could do like a whole month of Aaron and do all these, but part of me also wants to move along and get rolling on those other distilleries that I we covered at the beginning of this. But I might just focus on Aaron for a month and cover all these. Um, particularly looking forward to getting into the Sherry Cask because it's basically sort of at cast strength. So we will be doing Aaron. So next Saturday, next Saturday, everything goes well. I do a live stream and we'll cover Aaron Distillery. Uh, if not, it'll be the weekend after that. I have some business travel coming up. And so I'll be on my, but I record my videos ahead of time and upload them. So it won't affect uploaded videos. Um, but I have some business travel going on. I'm sort of working around that in terms of doing uh, live streams. So. Um, anyway, I uh, love the Sharon, but hate the Amarone. Uh, I will see. Uh, I, if, you're not, if you've never had Amarone, uh, it's an interesting wine. It's an interesting wine made from basically dried grapes. It's an interesting wine um, from the Veneto region of Italy, northeastern corner of Italy. But I like Amarone. I, um, um, and our Amarone Vella uh, Anyway, know, but I like it. All right. All right. Why not compare the full flight? Because of time, um, not because of just because of time. I'm I, I have a, I have a short time in which I'm trying to get through all these distilleries and cover them all before I have the exam to 2024. That's the only reason. Uh, that's the only reason. So, all righty. I want to thank everyone for uh, watching and commenting and asking questions. If anybody watching this on the replay has any comments or questions, leave them down below hope everyone has a healthy and safe rest of the weekend and until uh next time slan you